today is about designing your future. So we'll talk about why you would do this, how to do it, and when to do it. So designing your future is mental rehearsal. Why would you do it? Every single successful person mentally rehearses. Other statistics of athletes particularly out there show that when they have some sort of injury and they're not able to get out on the field and, and do what they would normally do, that if they mentally rehearse for as many or more hours than they would have been physically doing that activity every day, then their body helps repair itself so much quicker and when they do get out there on the field, they to some degree are even fitter than they were. And that's because the body is using every muscle that it would have been when they were physically doing that activity. So I really do encourage you to have a go at this. Your brain needs clarity and certainty. It needs to know that what you are going to do is safe the changes along the way, and what you want to get there in the end. It needs to know that you are determined, that you're motivated, that there is no confusion, nothing that's going to hold it back from achieving the goal that you want. Because your brain needs to engage all of those emotions as part of the... Um, next step up the brain. So we've talked a lot about what the reptilian brain needs. The limbic system needs lots of evidence in the way of pictures that you can achieve this goal and really using all of your emotions because nothing happens in your life without first have happened in your imagination. And your brain doesn't know the difference between imaginary and real. This is why there are so many people out there that have fake memories um, because you tell your brain something every day or often enough, it will believe it. So why not give your brain some messages that are going to help you, you know, succeed? I a lot of people that they think, oh, imagination, you know, I, I can never imagine pictures. Please know that imagination is different for everybody. Everybody doesn't see in pictures. Um, and even if you do see in pictures, some people see in black and white and some people see in color and some people see in sepia. It really doesn't matter. Whatever is, works for you. Just go with whatever preference works the best. So for some people, it's about what they feel in their bodies, what sensations are going on, what emotions are going on. For other people, it might be particular sounds that they might hear, perhaps things that people might be saying or other types of sounds that are going on. And for some people, it might be more around what they tasting or smelling or what's going on in your head, what self-talk you would be saying to yourself. Now, there'll be a time that I'll ask you to try and put in as many of the senses as possible to help your brain to really get the reality that it wants. So just work with what works for you. If you can't see pictures, don't fret, like just go with just go with something else. Just try and put in as many as you can. It only really takes potentially a few minutes um, to, to master this. I'll go through the steps with you because a lot of people think that it's just about ch achieving their end goal, but your brain needs more than that. It needs to know the process along the way. It needs to reinforce all of those um, things that you learned about the reptilian brain, that it's fun and safe and um, easy to do. So we'll, we will practice these steps, or at least I'll take you through what those steps are, and then I would like you to have a go at doing this. So please take some notes along the way of what the steps are and get some ideas around what you would do in each of these steps. It's a good idea to do this the first time you mentally rehearse um, and then when you go and mentally rehearse in the future, you'll have all of this. So what are the steps? The first step is to know what your end goal is. So you know you want to be a non-smoker, only breathing fresh air. Now I use the word non-smoker deliberately because an ex-smoker thinks about smoking. 
a non-smoker never, ever, ever thinks about smoking. That's what you want to be, a non-smoker. The non-smoker only breathing fresh air. And then what were some of those other reasons that you wanted to get there? They might be in there too. To be a really healthy version of yourself with lots of vitality. Then the next step is to know what activities are going to take you there. You don't just arrive. There are things that happen. You'll decide on a quit day. You're going to be throwing your smokes away on that quit day because your brain, remember, needs clarity and certainty. There cannot be any confusion with this. Once you've decided on your quit day, that is your quit day. You need to know what other activities that you're going to do. So instead of smoking, it might be drinking a glass of water when you first wake up in the morning. It could be doing some physical activity. It could be taking some deep breaths when you're feeling stressed, um, taking some replacement foods, some healthy foods to eat at times when you would have normally smoked. So having some of those ideas around what are you going to be doing instead of smoking. And then you need to know what the triggers are. So your triggers for throwing your cigarettes in the bin will be when you get to your chosen quit day. Well, if um, you're going to be doing some physical activity, what's going to be the trigger for that? Perhaps it's when you first get out of bed in the morning, so you, you're, you see you, your feet touch the floor and then you get dressed and you go for a walk or whatever the physical activity is going to be. It could be during your lunch break. So again, what are going to be the, the, the trigger for that? Um, it could be that you see your you know clock on on your computer at work or on your phone when it reaches a certain time or perhaps there's an alarm go goes off when it's your lunch break it could be when you're feeling a little bit of stress in your body that you take some deep breaths or that um you at certain times when you would normally have smoked that you get your little healthy snacks out and you you know have a couple of grapes or a few slices of apple or whatever it is that's your healthy snack you must know what your trigger is for these activities to start. Then you need to, to help you to get there. So we know what our end goal is. We know what actions we're going to do. We know what triggers are going to, to start that process in place. Now you also need to be able to really get into the senses with this. So when you are doing those activities, how are you going to feel? What are you going to be saying to yourself? So really reinforce how great it's going to be because your brain needs to know that this is going to be fun. Remember that if it thinks that the process is going to be hard, it will be hard. We want your brain to think it's going to be easy and fun and pleasurable so that it's safe to do this, perhaps congratulating yourself on taking the time to prepare that healthy snack or um, congratulating yourself for taking the time to acknowledge that you're feeling stressed and managing that more effectively. Have Really think about what might be your feelings that you have and the thoughts that will be going through your mind. And then the last step is know how you're going to feel when you've got to that end result. So how great will it be when you can look at the calendar two months down the track and you haven't had a cigarette or whatever time frame you want to put down that track. It could be two years, five years, continuing along of what a, how great it's going to feel when you've only been breathing fresh air. Help your body to know when you've got there by engaging as many senses as possible. What will people be saying to you? Perhaps congratulating you on your achievement. So what will you be hearing? What will you be feeling within yourself? Um, perhaps pride or um, just so excited. Perhaps you feel so energized. You're able to breathe so much better than you have in years. You'll be tasting and smelling things so much better. So really engage all of the senses, what you can hear, see, feel, taste, 
smell and also what thoughts will be going on in your head. You have all the steps now. The important thing is to do this as often as you can every day. But I would suggest even just spending a few minutes, perhaps when you first wake up in the morning, before you get out of bed, because your unconscious is at the most pliable at that point in time. So before you get out of bed, just with your eyes closed, go through all of those steps. And then before you go to sleep at night, again with your eyes closed, going through those steps. And do this multiple times, seeing your end goal, seeing all those triggers that are gonna take you there, and how you're gonna feel, what you'll be saying to yourself, how great it will be, how many years or months down the track, and what will be going on for you internally, what you'll be smelling, hearing, seeing, feeling, what will you be saying to yourself? So doing that multiple times every day, just a few minutes to build up your imagination so that your brain knows for sure this is what you want. Um, you wanna get more images in your head of you achieving this goal than you've got images in your head right now of you smoking. <laughs> and there might be quite a few images if you've been smoking for quite some time. So really get practicing with um, this. Have some fun. Remember, your brain wants things to be fun, simple. So please keep going with this. Commit to doing it every day. And you are bound to be successful. I'm Leanne Tag, Transformational Coach, reminding you that change can be easy and life-changing. Let me show you how.